I think we'll start now. Hi, everybody. I'm K Katie Kamanovich. Some of you guys know me as Katie, some of you know me as Katrina. I'm a pastry chef with Uncruz. I've been with them for about four years, worked on almost all the boats and in every destination we go to except for the Galapagos. Today, we are going to do French macarons. They are one of the trickiest pastries to do, but it seems like everyone's been baking at home, so I have I'll hope that you guys can make these but with my recipe and with my how-tos. There are only five ingredients to make these. You need sugar, you need 150 grams of granulated sugar, 40 grams of water, which we'll measure in a second, 110 grams of egg whites. This is about three extra large eggs or about four medium large eggs. I do everything with a scale. It gives you the best measurements for macaroons, especially with a finicky pastry like this. You want to have something, you want to have accurate measurements and the scale is the only way that you're going to get those. We also have 150 grams of almond flour. This has gone through a food processor or my Nutribullet. You want it to be a similar consistency as your powdered sugar and this is also 150 grams of that. There are four methods of making the French macaroons, and the French macaroons are those really pretty, colorful, delicate little cookies that you see in all the French pastries and a lot of different bakeries. They can be any flavor. Today we're gonna do raspberry. Um, they're gluten-free, they're dairy-free, depending on your filling. And today the method I'm gonna use is the Italian method. So I'm gonna make a sugar syrup, and that's going to be poured into the egg whites. There's three different methods you could do to make French macarons, and one of those is the French way, Swiss, and Italian. Uh, I prefer the Italian because it's it's kind of fail-proof. I've only kind of failed at it a couple times. It works on the boats, it works at home, so that's why we're going to do this method. It is a bit more trickier because you do have to heat the sugar up to 244 degrees. So you do need a thermometer, but it will make it, like I said, a more stable macaroon at the end of the day and less errors because there's a lot of, we'll go through a lot of things that can happen and go wrong. So I'm going to measure out 40 grams of water. And then I'm going to add in the sugar and turn on my stove to high. Luckily, my thermometer, it has a little kind of beep thing when it gets to the right temperature, but I'll keep an eye on it. If you don't have one or you have a thermometer, you want it to be, it's at the top end of the softball stage. If you don't have a thermometer, you could also get a little glass of like ice water or like a little dish like this full of ice water and just put in a little droplet of the sugar syrup and it's gonna feel like a softball in your hand, like it's gonna kind of squish once it gets kind of soft by, or cold from the water. Now we're gonna add in the egg whites to your bowl. We won't start mixing yet because you don't wanna over whip the egg whites. There's some belief in the egg whites that they have to be old. It releases a lot of the protein in the egg whites and they whip up faster. So a lot of French chefs will age their egg whites for about seven days at room temperature. I just did this overnight um, because I wanted to get prepared. We are gonna do them pink color today. You can do them any color you like. Um, I'm doing these for my mom for Mother's Day. We're gonna have a whole, my mom's from England, so we're gonna do a whole afternoon tea service and this is gonna be one of our desserts and well as scones and profiteroles and all her favorite things because we can't go anywhere on Mother's Day. Um, so what I'm gonna do with the powdered sugar and the almond flour is combine the two. Usually you would sift this over, but I don't have one here. So I'm just gonna whisk them together, just so they, they get together. You don't want any large clumps because once you start mixing that into the, folding it into the egg white mixture, it's gonna, you're gonna over mix it and you're never gonna get the clumps out now. So this is what's important at this moment in time is getting all the clumps out. 
and getting it all sort of, so you can't see almond flour and you can't see the sugar, so it's all homogenous. My sugar is only at 74 degrees right now, so we have a little bit to go on that. Um, the macarons, too, you can pipe them in different sizes. The traditional is round. If you've been with me in Baja, they have been, I did cacti ones. To go with what the landscape, I've done hearts, I've done big ones. Um, I've done, you can do a religious one, which is a typical French pastry where it's one on the bottom and then a small one on top. You can do big cakes, you can just have fun with them. And if, say, your shells don't work out really well, squirrels love them because I've had a few fails in my kitchen and have very happy squirrels and chipmunks. Are there any questions right now? Doesn't look like we have any questions right now. Just as a reminder, Everybody does have them, they can drop them in the chats, and we will also unmute you if you would like to speak with that, uh, Katie directly. So French macarons have been around since the Renaissance. They were first done in Italy. The Catherine de Medici, Medici, sorry if I said that wrong, in Venice. She was from France originally and married into the Italian royal family, and her chef brought them with her. But the Italian macaron was just, there was only one, and it was more with a almond paste. Um, those are still around today, and they're sort of pignoli cookies, so I'm doing with the pine nuts on top. Then in the 1700s, so they found, it was in LaRue's cooking book, and these two French nuns, known as the Mar Marcon sisters, they started making them and selling them. Um, then in, I think, the early 1900s, that's when they started doing the two cookies together, and that famous macaroon store where they charge an arm and a leg for one, they are... Uh, called Lottery. They're sort of the thought, like the grandfather of the, what we know as the modern day macaroon today. Um, if you're worried about what to do with your egg yolks, you could do things like ice cream, custards, flans, creme brulees, all sorts, pastry creams. Um, so it's not going to go to waste or just add it into the scrambled egg mix and then you'll have a richer scrambled egg. Sorry that my stove is taking so long to heat up. While you're waiting for that to heat up, we do have a question from Ursula about the eggs overnight. Are you covering them, uncovering them? Are they room temperature? They're, these were at room temperature. I just had them in a little Tupperware with a lid on top. Um, you do want them covered just because you don't know what, what could get in a minute. Um, I've worked with some people, one chef, I, a French chef I work with, we would leave them for a month at room temperature and they get kind of funky. So you don't want to do that because um, you want to, you know, stay safe. But at room temperature overnight, we'll be okay. They're, these will be cooked twice. They're going to be cooked with the 244 degree sugar and then they're going to be cooked in the oven. You want your oven. I have mine preheated at 315 degrees. You can go anywhere from 300 to 325, 350, depending on your oven. Um, I'm still, my oven's pretty new. I'm still getting to know it. And I'm not, this is the longest I've ever been home to kind of play with it. Um, the sugar syrup has started boiling a bit. And I haven't started the egg whites. Yeah, because I, like I said, I don't want to overmix them. I'll show you when we get there the consistency. I want them. You don't want to overmix your egg whites and then they get too dry and then it's going to be a really dry cookie. Like I said, this is a finicky recipe. It's five ingredients, but there's about 30, 40, 100 variables at all times that I'm trying to control. Um, baking is great at this time with the whole COVID happening is that we can control something in our lives with everything going amok right now. Um, I think that's why people are really liking baking right now and baking is just the best. Not done. 
It almost went. Right, almost 200 degrees. So once it gets to about 230, I'm going to start the mixer. This is probably the most dangerous part of the baking, um, is that I'm going to slowly stream in the sugar syrup. So you want to make sure you don't have people around you, no one's going to scoop you, because you can get burnt by this. Um, you don't want to. Almost there. This recipe is going to give you about, depending on how your shells come out, anywhere from 20 to 40 macaroon pairs. Um, so I have sheet pans ready. Um, I'm using sill pads because I don't have any parchment in my house right now. Um, and these work out great and they don't, they get a bit different than what you would get with parchment. Um, what you're looking for when you do the macaroons is that nice smooth top and what we call the foot or the crown at the bottom. That's the steam from the egg whites coming out. So the mark of a good macaroon is having that nice foot and then a nice smooth, glossy finish. Usually on the boats, this is the smallest of the recipes I'll do. Usually for a full boat, I would do about four to eight times of this recipe and make about 300 macarons. And if you're worried, like, wow, that sounds like a lot, um, these do freeze really well if you're at home by yourself or only a couple of you in the house. You can freeze them with the filling or without. So you could have raspberry today or like a chocolate one the next time you have a hankering for macarons. Um, most of the grocery stores I've seen, I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts, they still have almond flour. They don't have any other kinds of flours, but they do have the almond flour. So most of this is stuff that you can still find in the grocery store. So I'm going to start the mixer. Just on low. We do have a question coming in from Bruce. Um, his question is, how hot is the sugar moisture, or mixture rather? How hot is the sugar mixture? 244 degrees or 114 Celsius. And when you're pouring it in, you don't want to get too wet. Ursula also has a question. She's got some new ingredients that she wants to get creative with. So she's ideas where, uh, what she could do with a small bag of coffee flour that she has. Coffee flour? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of coffee flour. Um, that might be good in a sponge cake recipe because you could substitute all your all-purpose flour with that flour and cornstarch and maybe make a tiramisu with that because you might get the coffee flavor through that. I know a lot of bread bakers with bread, they're introducing new flours to their bread so you could get the color from that. I've actually never heard of that in the stores, but I think people are getting desperate not having flour. Not 
It's, is there another question? it's difficult to hear you when the blender's on, but otherwise we're good. We're enjoying it. Okay. I'm just going to let it go. You guys take a minute break. I'm going to go grab three. are now a nice see? You don't want them too too thick but you still want them to be somewhat. So see it has a nice nice peak to it. Sorry for the noise. So I got my tip ready while I was splitting that with. I use an Teco 804. It's a nice size, not too big um, and not too small. I've seen some people do it with super tiny tips and you're just kind of pushing it too much and you're kind of getting all the air out and you just, you just work so hard and so loudly to get this. So we're gonna try to maintain all that air. Like I said, we're maintaining air, but I'm gonna put on, fold all of the dry ingredients in and you wanna, again, try to get no clumps and have it all be the same. So I made a batch yesterday and I had big clumps and I was like, oh, it will come out while I mix it. It doesn't, so please learn from my fails. Um, so again, try to get all the clumps out and I'm just gonna put it all in at once. There's different methods for this. I found this works well for me, so I do it that way. And the consistency we're trying to go for here is lava. So think if you've been on the Hawaii trip, think of Hawaii and Safari exploring and lava. So you can see it's not quite mixed in at all right now. And you wanna be a bit aggressive with this. They're very dainty pastries, but you're gonna see in the third step we're gonna do, things get a little bit crazy. There's gonna be some more loud noises, of banging and punching. So if you're having a really bad day, macarons are really fun to do because you can punch them. So this is looking a lot better than yesterday. It's nice and, you can see it's nice and fluffy but there's still a few left. So I'm just gonna get it. There's some streaks in there, you can see. So I'm gonna try to get those out. Um, really good to have piping bags. You can get these on Amazon or you can find them at craft stores too. Um, it's a much better deal to get a hundred pack. Um, they'll last you a really long time. They're good to have at Christmas or times like these. Just wanna bake. So the best way to fill your bag is to hold it in your less, less dominant hand, hold it like a cup, hold it halfway down, and then you can fill your bag from there. It's the easiest way. You can also get, if you're not comfortable with this, you can get a large cup, a large tall glass, put your bag in and then fill it that way. Um, I've just done this so many times that I can't, I don't know another way and it's just second nature to me at this point. So I'm just going to turn the camera down a bit so you can see the piping. So hold it in your hand and all the pressure is going to come from this hand up here. This hand is just going to guide it, the bottom hand. So you just want to go like this and stop 
and go and count one, two, stop, one, two, stop. And steady pressure the whole time and stop after the two and kind of do a flick and twist. So you're not doing that tail like I just did there. And these are about, I would say about a quarter size. Um, like I said, I've done this probably a couple hundred thousand times. So it's, like I said, second nature. But if you are doing it for the first time at home, you can always do a little guide either with paper or a parchment, get a quarter, or if you have ring molds, just with a parch with a Sharpie to draw around it, and then you have your guide. They do sell some molds that are macaroon molds, but why waste your money when you can just pipe them? And I've never needed to use those. Um, here comes the part I was telling you about where it's gonna get loud. So um, we're gonna knock some air out of these. Hopefully the camera doesn't go flying. Um, just slam them down. And then pump. This is getting all the big, there might be big air pockets from the rain and from the folding, so you're kind of put those out. So I'm gonna let those hang out for about five minutes. Um, there's some, some people say to leave them until they get a skin on top. That can be anywhere from five minutes to two hours, depending on, maybe not two hours, um, the environment. If you're in a really humid environment, you may need more time for them. But I find once I pipe out all the batches, they're usually good to go. I'm gonna pipe one more. Um, these are also, I'm giving them to my neighbors and um, my hairdresser and old friends in the city. And they're a great little cookie because they're an impressive cookie because people are kind of scared of them because they think they're hard to do. And as you see, it's real, it's five ingredients. It's not that, it's not that bad. Um, once you know the technique and you know the feel for it, they're great. And they're, you feel really proud of them. They're just these perfect little round, pretty little shiny things. And they're great to do at Christmas. Do I did um, red and green ones at Christmas. And again, if you've been on a boat with me, you've probably had macarons and I did like really crazy flavors with them. I did ice cream cone, fruity pebble. Um, I've done root beer float. I've done a hot sauce one, a beer, in it, a beer one, a mac and cheese one. That was for Super Bowl many years ago. So more punching and more spinning. Sorry for the noise. And if you've ever been on a boat with me and wondered what that noise was, it was the next. Let's let this hang out. And you can always do these in batches. I have a lot of sheet pans because I've, I'm a baker at home. Um, if you only have a couple, you can the the batter will sit in the bag for a bit, so you're you'll be okay. And like I said, they do freeze really well. They're just not so great in the fridge because the sugar really likes water. So they're gonna get kind of soggy if you put them in the fridge. So don't, try not to. And if you put them in the freezer too, when they come out, they're gonna be all nice and shiny, again, from the sugar and the moisture. Nice. Try to get these that way. Um, and again, you can pipe hearts with it. You can, um, do them long ways, big ways, um, really whatever you want to do. Just factor that into your cooking time if they are bigger, um, and they're going to be a bit flatter too. More banging. The baking is to prevent a lot. If say I were to put these in the oven they would kind of explode. So there'd be these big, big cracks. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And by looking at them, you wouldn't be like, to, if you know what the end result's gonna look like. Okay, we're gonna go in the oven now. Like I said, I'm doing mine at 315. Um, we'll do them for 10 minutes and see how they look then okay any questions yeah 
Yeah, we've got a couple of questions from Ursula. So as always, um, all the pastry chefs on board on cruise create miracles in the small space of the galley. And so uh, this is kind of referenced to that. Everyone's always curious about how it's done. And she says, so when you're on the boat to make those bigger batches, how do you fold in the dry ingredients with something like this? On those, I would use um, a bench scraper. So um, we have 20, 20 to 30 quart mixers on the boats. So you'll get it and then you'll just, um, you basically, it will be up to here in your arm, folding it in. Um, my massage therapist hates me because I have crazy shoulders from all the folding and mixing that we do. Um, on some of the boats, when we have to do a lot of bread, the bread will literally be growing out of the bowl um, to get it all in for that, to make all the bread that we need to. Um, the bread batches can, like some days I would do almost over 50 pounds of bread dough to be shaped for one day. A lot of bread. And with the small spaces, um, like I said, I've been on seven or eight of the boats, so each boat has different space. If you're on the Wilderness Adventure Explorer or the Discover, you get to work overnight, so you have the whole kitchen to yourself, which is great, but you're also up during the night and have to clean up after yourself. You don't have a gal utility to help you, but it, it's fun. I just would have private dance parties all night and just bake and have fun. Um, but e there's, it's a challenge for sure. Like right now in my kitchen, this is about the same size that I would have on the boats. Um, the Quest is a whole different story that's very tiny and you, you can only really do one thing at a time. You can have a few things in motion, but to keep yourself sane is to only kind of do one thing at a time. There. Another question from Ursula. So with the, when you pipe them on the sheet, um, some of them were closer together than others. Is, is that okay? Is there a specific way to keep them apart or do they not spread much? Um, no, those are about, they spread more when I did the, the banging of them. Um, though they're gonna pretty, they're not gonna be like a chocolate chip cookie or different cookies with butter where they're gonna spread because of the butter in them. These are pretty much gonna stay where they are. Like if you were to do a pavlova or a meringue, they might spread about a centimeter or so, but the, the batch, the egg whites were the consistency and everything was folded in. So fingers crossed, they're gonna work. Um, they come out about, these were ones I did yesterday. They come out about this size. Um, you can do a smaller, you can, some, they did go bigger because I had some issues with my mix yesterday. Um, and I just, I have, raspberry jelly or jam ready to go to type in it. It's just store-bought because um, it's easier right now. We have a question from Bruce. How hot was the burner on the stove when you cooked the sugar water mixture? I had it, I thought I had it on high, but I had it on a uh, medium high. Um, I said that that's what was taking so long. Because you have a thermometer in it, it's okay to have it at, at the high heat. It's not like you're doing a caramel where you want to kind of get it to that nice color where it's, there's that moment in caramel where you're like, oh my God, it's gone over. So this way with the thermometer, you can do it on the high heat. And it's really, it's a small amount. It's only all told less than a cup and a half of sugar. I think it's only 150 grams and 40 grams of water and that dissolves. So about, I don't know what it is in cups, but it's really, it's really not that much. So it was pretty quick. It felt like forever doing this, but um, it was pretty, pretty quick. Uh, thing about the color, um, this is a gel color. Um, you don't want to use a water-based color because you don't want to add more moisture into the meringue or to the cookie. This is always like the hard part because you want to open it and see how they're doing. Oh, they're okay for doing it on live. Um, let's talk about filling them. So there's lots of different fillings you can do. You could do a ganache. The easiest way to do that is one part chocolate to one part heavy cream. So you would take your heavy cream just before it boils and pour that over your chopped chocolate or chocolate chips. Let that sit for a few minutes and then whisk it together so it's all one nice happy family. Let that sit till it's almost crystallized, almost the consistency of Nutella, and then you can pipe that or scoop that into the cookies. Um, you want a nice bit of filling in these, so 
see we're gonna go like that this is pretty loose jam so about maybe a dime or a nickel of filling and then you put on top and that's there you go macarons we have five minutes left of our ten minutes I might rotate it halfway through, um, when it gets to 10. They'll go anywhere from 12 to 14 minutes for um, each batch, depending. How to know when they're done is when you touch them, they feel firm. If you kind of you do it and your hand goes through, they're not done. But if you do it and they're, they feel sturdy and firm, they're done. Sort of not like checking a cake where you just feel if it springs back. You want these to be nice and firm to know that they're done, but not overburn. Um, so that's another good reason to do the color is that it kind of hides if you have hot spots in your oven the color kind of hides out of it. If you do um, or if you want to know where your hot spots are in your oven they're a great thing to do because you know where they are. Especially with white ones they'll, they'll show. Um, oh yeah other fillings. We could do buttercreams. So you could do um, one part butter to two parts of powdered sugar and that will get you a buttercream and you can flavor that how you like with cocoa powder, you could add in ganache, mint filling, um, you could use Nutella, um, really whatever you like. They're great, they're great for really any, they take on the flavor. I personally don't flavor the cookies because like I said, there's so many things that you're trying to control. I don't wanna add in something else that might affect the outcome of it. Um, so that's why I, I do really flavorful fillings. Um, yeah, any questions? <laughs> Bruce would like to know if there were any uh, residual effects from your toe accident last July. <laughs> it seems like- he's I had almost heard so I hurt my toe, like I was on the wilderness adventure and I was working overnight and where my bed was downstairs in Lower Crew is right where the, the buffet line is and there were people running around and it woke me up and I got up to use the bathroom and I walked right into my bed post which was metal and my poor little pinky toe took full brunt force of that and I had to wear a special boot for a month or so. Um, but it, it was fine. I actually forgot, honestly forgot about it. Um, I injure myself a lot because I'm accident prone. So um, I've dealt with hurt fingers, hurt toes, broken ankles, um, lots of crazy, lots of, you get hurt a lot in this job. People think it's all pretty and dainty, but pastry chefs are pretty tough. Oh, burns? I see that one. Yes. Um, Lots of burns. Sugar burns are my favorite burns. They hurt the most, but they heal the best. Um, I don't know if we call them tattoos in the industry. Um, I've marked up my whole arms are great. Sometimes, um, especially if there's rough seas, you're getting stuff out of the oven. Sometimes things move, some things happen. Um, I'll sort of plan my recipes based on the seas too. Sorry to kind of change subjects about that. So doing things like hot sugar, I'll wait till I know we're smooth. So if I was doing macarons in Panama, I would do them while we were waiting to go into the canal. Or um, on turn days, on our like Saturdays or Fridays, I would make like creme caramel and get the caramel ready. So if, say it was a rough day, we were at anchor, we were docked, and I would be safe and people around me would be safe. I've also had blow torches kind of light on fire in my hands, like malfunctioning once was forgot what I was doing, but the whole thing on fire and like threw it in a sink. Um, so yeah, good, good fun times. Like lots of stories you wouldn't think a baker would have, but okay. um, we have 30 more seconds on the oven, but I don't think they'll be done. I always want to sit down like they do on the Great British Bake Off and watch them but they're looking good they look nice and smooth and shiny and i'll take out one in 10 minutes and kind of show you what they look like um yeah. and i've been able to do macaroons on pretty much every itinerary in every boat it's sort of my challenge on the boats is to kind of see where i can um do 
do want because they are challenging. Um, everyone asked about um, the moisture and humidity, but they're okay. So you can see, ooh, there they go. Um, they're nice. They have nice feet, but they're not done. They're kind of squidgy. Kind of squidgy. So you right now I'm going to draw. The purpose right now is to dry them out. Um, they've done what they needed to do, so we'll do about four minutes. Um, the first part of the oven is most important, so make sure it is preheated once they go in, because to get this part, is that not really good? See the foot? Um, that's again from the steam from the, the moisture in the egg whites escaping from it. So that's what makes it nice and bubbly and we'll make that nice shell. And that's what's gonna happen in the first few minutes of baking. And then we're gonna go into the drying process of them so that they get, see the nice base there? You want them to have nice smooth bases. And like this one, I picked up too soon, so I got stuck, so I was all excited about them. Um, and then these also, I think I over, I don't know what I did, but, um, yeah, they're hollow. That's okay. The squirrels will eat them, or my brother will. So three more minutes, and then we'll be good to go. A little bit more. These ones in the oven are going to be, I'm going to make a rhubarb buttercream tomorrow. Um, I was hoping there'll be rhubarb in the stores, but it wasn't. I have a rhubarb extract that I'll use for my buttercream, and I'll also use the egg yolks I have left over. Um, it's called, you can look up a recipe for it, it's a French buttercream, and it's my favorite buttercream to use because it takes on flavors really well because the, the fats and the yolks will take on the flavors. Um, so you would do the same, almost the same method we did here, but we'll whip up egg yolks with a sugar syrup to 237 degrees. Whip those till full volume, so it's nice, light, and fluffy, and you can do a figure eight in the yolks. And then once it's cool, you'll add in the butter and whip that up um, and then add in your flavoring. So that's what I'll, I'll do either tonight or tomorrow or Sunday um, for Mother's Day for my mother. It's only been two minutes, but I'm just gonna check. So you can see they've taken on no color apart, no brown tinge because the oven's at a nice temperature and they're nice and firm and they're, they're full. Um, so we're gonna take them all off. So you can see in this one, this one had a lot on there. They didn't spread all that much, but see how that one's moving? This one isn't done because this was at the bottom shelf and my top shelf <laughs> a lot faster. Um, I need some better. So I'll let those go for another two minutes, but that first tray is done. So you can see they're all nice, nice and uniform, better than yesterday's. Firm and not squidgy. Any questions? Any anything? It doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat, but outside of these, what are some of your other favorite things to cook on board? Oh, my new favorite one, if you've been with me lately, it's called the I call it the apple strudel. Um, it's a molded apple that's filled with like a sour cream and vanilla mousse. And uh, caramelized apples and little phyllo discs, and then I paint each one to look like an apple. Um, sometimes it'll be green, red, and then multicolor, so it just looks like a nice orchard all out in the dining room. Um, that was my favorite one. Um, I recently did our culinary and wine trips, and I got to make all sorts of fun stuff for that. Um, that was the first time I did the apple because I was highlighting the Washington apple. I did a lot of things with hazelnuts and I do a sticky toppy pudding. I made my own clotted cream. Um, had a lot of fun in, and I was just in 
what was that? I was in Baja recently and always would do the macaroons in a the cactus shape. And those were with a uh, Mexican eggnog filling. So it had a rum and cinnamon filling inside. Of her. I think we're good. I'm actually allergic to these. I'm allergic to the almonds, so I actually don't know what they're what they come out as. But people tell me they're good, so we'll go with that. Um, so yeah, these ones are nice and smooth. See the nice smooth thing and the nice dome on top. Oh, that was a failure. See, I took that one too soon, but that's okay. The squirrel will eat it. Let's check on these guys. Oh, yeah, those are nice and firm. Another batch all done. So thank you all for joining me on your Friday evening and afternoon for to learn how to make macaroons. I'll send um, Cruz a recipe and a how-to method so in case you weren't here from the beginning or didn't jot it all down, I'll have it and also be there for any questions or baking emergencies you may have. Um, I'm here. So thank you all. That's great. Uh, we do have a question from Ursula. Do you ever okay. score some interesting ingredients while you're on board to bake with? Or yes. Um, I love going to the grocery stores and seeing what they have locally, especially in places like Panama, Costa Rica. We don't, we get so much tropical fruit down there and it's like, I just want to bake with this stuff or nice um in panama and costa rica there's this amazing pastry chocolate store called chocolatissimo that we get all our chocolate from it's a pastry chef's dream to see everything in there um so there's different things that you get to play with i take a lot of inspiration from what other chefs are doing um on instagram kind of seeing what people are doing and be like, oh i could do that on the boats we're also limited in space and not in just surface space, but in fridge space and freezer space, so fun stuff to do. And there's always new stuff I wanna do, but I always feel bad if I don't give people the classics that I do, um, like the carrot cake, the tiramisu, things like that. I feel like I'm cheating people out of desserts and you guys don't know what I do. Um, but again, always like to make macarons during any trip I do. They're just fun. So they're super cute. Um, these were, this was a really good batch for doing it live, which I'm really amazed by. Thank you. And done for Mother's Day. Beautiful. We've got a lot of comments from Lynn and Bruce and Ursula. Thank you so much. Thank you for the gluten free, the dairy free. We love sailing with you. <laughs> Great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks so I much. This was so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye.